Hi guys, this is Mr. Miller. This is our lecture on vectors and projectile motion. All right, so what are vectors? We've touched on this a little bit before, but a vector is a quantity that includes magnitude and direction. A scalar is a quantity that's magnitude only and no direction. Some examples of this are displacement is a length in a particular direction. Velocity, we said, was speed with direction. Acceleration. It's the rate at which velocity changes with time, since velocity is a vector. Acceleration is a vector. And then force. Force is a push or pull. It's a vector. Think of it this way. You're being pulled down towards the surface of the Earth by the force of gravity. If gravity were acting upward suddenly, you know, things would not be so good, right? So vectors are magnitudes, quantities with magnitude and direction. Scalars, distance, speed, volume, time, length, density, Magnitude only, no direction. All right, so why are we talking about vectors? Well, we're going to take our concept of one-dimensional motion a little bit further and go into two dimensions. In order to have a good way of representing that motion, we need to be able to draw velocity vectors to show more than one dimension. All right, so when we go about and we represent vectors, we're going to go ahead and use arrows. Arrows are used to represent the magnitude and size magnitude, size, and direction of the vectors itself. A larger arrow means the vector has a larger magnitude, okay? So just imagine, if you're a fan of, say, Marvel movies, we had one movie where Wolverine's in Japan and he's running on top of a train, right? If we were to just isolate his mo motion, you know, fast guy, say he's running at three meters per second, we draw that with a tiny arrow to the right, He's on top of a train that's moving 100 meters per second to the right as well. And 100 is bigger than 3 meters per second, so we draw that with a larger arrow to the right overall. Both going to the right, larger arrow, bigger velocity. All right, same thing here. If you're in a car and you're picking up speed, you're going in the same direction the entire time, your arrows point in the same direction, and they get longer and longer, the faster you're going, because velocity is a vector. We show vectors with arrows, all right? If we go back to our free fall examples, as you drop an object, it picks up speed, right? So as it picks up speed, we can show the velocity with an arrow that's becoming longer and longer each second as the object's picking up speed, and it's, and it's moving downwards, so we draw that arrow downwards, all right? But what if you have multiple vectors? There's a great example. There's this uh, movie that starred Dwayne The Rock Johnson, one of Mr. Miller's favorite action heroes. It's called San Andreas. And at one point, they get into an airplane. And so in this scenario, say you are a pilot of one of these two airplanes. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, being an experienced pilot, he getting into the same airplane as you, um, or the same model, the airplane is capable of going 80 kilometers per hour. And so Dwayne Johnson decides to go north with the wind. And so his total velocity is going to be the sum of all of the velocities that are pointing in the same direction. So he's lucky he gets 100 kilometers per hour, right? Experienced physicist, Dwayne Rock Johnson, of course, we love him. And you, unfortunately, hop into trying to escape the same collapsing California, the same situation, the San Andreas Fault's collapsing, buildings are collapsing, it's scary. You take a little bit of a gamble. Instead of going north, you go south, right? Your plane can still go 80 kilometers per hour. It's the same model as Dwayne The Rock Johnson's, but you go against the wind. And so because you are flying into the wind, one velocity vector, notice how these two arrows are pointing in opposite directions. It turns out that going into the wind is going to be harder your velocity is going to be less. So, unfortunately, you do not survive. Not great. Dwayne The Rock Johnson does. But our point is we add or subtract vectors depending on the direction the vectors are pointing. All right? So, what does that mean? Well, go back to our example of our friend on top of a train. If he's running on in the same direction as the train from the point of view of the ground, his overall velocity is the velocity of the train plus his velocity. 
How do we know it's added up? Because they're pointing the arrows, the vectors are in the same direction. Right? Same concept, but opposite directions. Okay, We have our friend Wolverine is now running backwards along the train. We'd say his velocity from the ground is equal to the velocity of the train minus his velocity. Why would we subtract? Because, well, these are going in opposite directions. And notice how it still ends up with 90, 97 meters per second to the right. So he's still moving to the right in the direction of the train overall. That kind of makes sense, right? If you were running on top of the train, we'd be like, hey, you, get down from there. But he'd still be going away from us. Why? Because he's not nearly as fast as the train overall. Like Mr. Miller, maybe Wolverine is actually that fast. Oh, well, maybe he is. All right. So now that we've introduced ourselves to the idea that vectors we show with arrows, when we go into two-dimensional motion, we break up two-dimensional motion, which we see as vector arrows that are at a diagonal. We can break up these diagonal arrows representing velocity into a vertical part and a horizontal part. And the important part is that the horizontal and vertical components do not affect each other at all. In fact, it turns out that for two-dimensional motion, vertical forces affect vertical motion, and horizontal forces affect, affect horizontal motion only. Okay. Here's an example. Can we talk about a ball moving under the influence of gravity? If we go ahead and drop a ball, we know that gravity is a vertical force that's going to cause the ball to pick up speed as it moves further down. But if we roll a ball horizontally, gravity is not going to affect the motion of the ball horizontally whatsoever, right? Its overall horizontal motion is going to be the same throughout its entire path of motion, all right? So two-dimensional motion, we have a vertical component, horizontal component, completely separate, all right? All right, that's it for now. We'll see you guys next time.